Hello and welcome to Simply Music. I'm Robin Keane, a master Simply Music teacher. And I'm Mark S. Merritt, an advanced Simply Music teacher. I've been teaching Simply Music since 2003 and Mark's been teaching it since 2008. And we'll be your teachers for this four song workshop. We're excited to have you here and we're sure that you'll enjoy the journey. This journey is all about learning to play music. And it's a journey that can have an incredible impact on you. There are intellectual benefits, with music learning increasing your capacity to reason and to process information. There are social benefits. After all, music is something that often brings people together. There are emotional and psychological impacts. Developing the skill of playing an instrument can lead you to feel really good about yourself, and it gives you a great opportunity to express yourself through music. We can even consider there to be spiritual benefits. When you connect to the natural musicality that's such a core part of what it means to be a person, that's a very powerful experience that many would describe as spiritual. And now, more than ever, music has a new and important role to play for us. As technology continues to weave its way into our lives in new ways, we're realizing that the kinds of thinking that helped us to create this world, science, technology, engineering, math, they're not enough to help us deal with the complexities and challenges of this new technological era. What we need is another type of thinking that's based in creativity, improvisation, and harmony. Those are the very foundations of thinking that music nourishes in the brain, and they're at the heart of the Simply Music approach. We're going to be some spending some time throughout this program not only teaching you how to play four songs, but telling you about Simply Music what it is, how it was developed, how we get the results we achieve, and why we do certain things the way we do. All of this will help us create a foundation that maximizes the likelihood of success so that you can get the very best possible results and achieve all these great impacts of music we've just talked about. You may be a brand new student having never played the piano or keyboard before. You may be someone who's played for years but has to rely on the written music. Or you may be a teacher who's heard about our playing-based method and wonder how it really works. This program will have an impact on you no matter who you are. Simply Music is a comprehensive program that typically unfolds over six to ten years. Everyone, even people with previous experience, start at the beginning because we teach you a new way of learning. Think about it like this. You're an expert on the alphabet, right? This isn't a trick question. Of course you are. However, if I take that alphabet and organize it into, say, Italian, you're no longer an expert. Things look familiar, but there's a new way of seeing it. In the same way, we'll be taking something that's familiar and presenting it in an entirely different way. You'll experience that in working directly on the keyboard instead of reading the music on the written page. And you'll be seeing music in terms of shapes, sentences, patterns, tail pieces, and chord progressions. This way of seeing music without having to refer to the page leaves you free to relate directly to the instrument, and it's an entirely different and very natural environment. Let's take a moment to tell you how these lessons work. First, you have us, your teachers. As we teach you the four songs, we're going to show you how Simply Music works and how to get the best results. We're also going to cover what you'll be learning when you continue lessons with a teacher, either in person, or online, or even if you become a teacher yourself. When you're done with each session, you'll want to pull up the corresponding student home materials, videos, where you can review each piece in small segments as many times as you want. We'll explain the materials thoroughly in the next lesson. You'll want to take your time and have fun. And remember, the goal is to learn the strategies behind the songs, because learning those will help you with whatever other songs you'll want to learn in the future. Right now, you might be wondering what you've gotten yourself into. I mean, just what is Simply Music and how does it work? Well, Simply Music itself is the world's largest playing-based music education organization. We offer piano programs for teachers and for students all over the world, from age 5 to 95, who want to have music as a lifelong companion. The Simply Music program is a breakthrough. Now, I know breakthrough is an overused word, but when I say this program is a breakthrough, I mean something specifically. I'm not saying this program is better than traditional methods. 
What I mean is that this program produces results that are a geometric leap beyond what people have ever considered possible in music education. It culturally redefines what it means to be musical. It culturally redefines who is capable of teaching music. There are four things about Simply Music that have it stand apart from any other program. Initially, it's the quantity of music that students learn to play. The quality of music that you play from the very beginning, the speed at which you learn, and the ease that you experience in the actual learning. We get asked, how does this program do all those things? What is it about Simply Music that's different from traditional methods? Let's define traditional lessons. These are the symbols that represent written music. In any country around the world where these symbols are used to represent music, there's a way of teaching that goes hand in hand with that. Let's call that approach a reading-based approach. If I were a traditional teacher teaching a reading-based approach, we'd learn all the symbols and the names for all the notes and the symbols. That each of the keys on the keyboard borrows its name from the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and each of these keys has a way of being written on this page. And we learn things like F-A-C-E and then E-G-B-D-F, which we might remember as every good boy deserves fudge. You'd learn how to decode these symbols so you know which notes to play. That's language one. Then there's another language, which is rhythm, which is really math. You'd learn that music is broken into segments, and each segment has a certain number of counts, and you'd learn how to count. And you'd learn how long to hold each note down with quarter notes, half notes, whole, eighth, sixteenth notes, which some teachers call crotchets, minims, semibreves, quavers, semiquavers. And there are a few other languages that are part of reading musical symbols as well. So there's a lot of math, a lot of thinking about multiple different aspects of what's going on. And this is all while you're learning how to to use your fingers. And your ability to decode the symbols and translate the math dictates your ability to play. That's a reading-based approach. There are consequences to teaching this way. More pianos and keyboards are purchased every year than any other kind of musical instrument. And yet, one study reported 11 million unused pianos in American households. And there are 40 million unused pianos worldwide. Why is this? Because despite the obviously huge interest in these instruments, piano lessons have the highest failure rate of any taught subject. Many children never even touch the piano again for the rest of their lives when their parents no longer require them to take lessons. It's not a lot of fun. Simply Music is not a reading-based approach. Simply Music is a playing-based approach. Quite simply, in the beginning, we temporarily delay the reading process and we teach you to play by immersing you in playing. It's completely natural. See, you and I got to talk for years before we ever got to read and spell. So if we took the traditional approach to music and applied it to language, I'd say from now on, all infants have to read and spell before they can learn to talk. That's really preposterous, but that's what we've done in music education for the past few centuries. When you work inside a playing-based environment, it's a completely different experience. When you're not having to focus on how to decode the symbols, you're free to relate directly to the instrument. You learn by doing, just like you do with basically every other physical activity you've ever learned. This program is based on the premise that everyone, without exception, is profoundly musical, even those people who are convinced that they're not. Some people tell me that they haven't got a musical bone in their body. And I say, say that again? And they say, I haven't got a musical bone in my body. Mark, join me. I, I haven't, haven't got, got a musical bone in my body. I haven't got a musical bone in my body. Da 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 You can't even say a word without demonstrating your profound musicality. It's a beautiful, complex rhythm. No thinking, no theory, no math. I want to give Robin a hand for doing such a great job with that demonstration. Join me at home. Robin, you uh, give yourself a hand too, OK? Now, now let's try to clap unevenly. 
What's harder, the regular clapping? No, the clapping unevenly. It is hard not to be musical. It really takes work to squash that natural musicality that is just there for all of us. See, what happens is that little children hear their parents talking and they begin to babble. And words become sentences. And when they're three or four years old, they're talking fully. They've never learned to read or write, but they have mastery over language and complex rhythm. We're nothing but music-making machines, and it's that musicality gives us the ability to walk and to talk and to even pick up our toothbrush and go chick, 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 chick. That's musicality. And this program has a way of just taking that and translating it into you playing this repertoire of fantastic music right away from your very first lessons. If you've never had a piano lesson before, you have to start somewhere. Very often when you start, you won't really know your fingers. You want to have this finger play, but it doesn't quite know how to do that. Reading-based methods have to begin with only the most basic pieces, because anything more is just too much when you're also trying to deal with the symbols on the page. Another option is learning scales, where you play a particular set of notes one at a time all the way up and all the way down. But it's kind of boring and not much fun. And I can promise you that you will never go to dinner and have someone say, oh, you're taking piano lessons? Why don't you sit down and play us some scales? See, it's much more fun to play songs. They have a beginning, middle, and an end, and they sound good, and it's just more fun. We're not focused on producing concert pianists. This is a program for people who want to have music as a companion in their lives. Come home from work, spend an hour playing whatever you like on the piano. But you have to start somewhere. We teach you contemporary, blues, jazz, and classical, as well as improvisation, composition, arrangements, and accompaniment. Here's a very simple piece, and I'll sing it for you. It's called Dreams Come True. Sitting here with you Nothing much to say Listen to my thoughts Pass the time away I like having dreams One for me and you Think I'll make my dreams come true And here's another song. It's called Night Storm, which also fits into this genre, but it has a slightly different mood. Rolling thunder, clouds are coming, looks like rain tonight. Close your eyes and go to sleep and listen to the night. Next I'm going to play for Elise a well-known classical piece by Beethoven. And now I'm going to play you a song called Alma Mater Blues. Blues pieces are lots of fun to play, fun to learn, and really easy. Now let's talk about accompaniment. Let's say it's your birthday. 
out comes the cake, and I sit down, and everyone sings happy birthday while I play the piano. But I'm actually not playing happy birthday. I'm playing what everyone sings along to. Let's take a look at this with a song called Amazing Grace that you might recognize. And Mark, come on over and sing with me. Ready? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind, but now I see. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> What's really great about accompaniment? It's the canvas that the painting goes on, the mattress that the melody rests on. It's so great, it's so simple, and so easy. And what's really cool about accompaniment is that it's like a musical Lego kit. You have these pieces that you can just take apart and put together and create another song and another. It's such a great skill to have. It's really exciting, really inspiring. It's a tremendous incentive for you to move forward because you get really great results from the beginning. Who knows, in a month or two, you might even be playing with a band, really. Incidentally, these pieces that I've shown you and played today are where our total beginners start. You start here. You learn these very songs. In fact, within your first eight or ten lessons, you'd have eight or ten songs of this standard that you'd be playing from beginning to end with both hands. That's just the norm with this program. Let me tell you about how this method was developed. Neil Moore, the founder of Simply Music, had been teaching traditional reading-based lessons and coaching other piano teachers for years when he received a call from a government agency asking him if he could teach Wade, an eight-year-old boy who was blind. So the traditional approach to reading was just out of the question. Since Neil couldn't use the traditional approach, he wondered what to do. And he thought back to his own experience growing up. He was the youngest of four brothers who all took piano lessons. When he started lessons, the teacher would play the songs, but Neil didn't focus on the written music. When his teacher played, Neil would hear and see the music as patterns and shapes. So he'd learn the songs his own way, even though he felt he was doing something wrong by not learning how to read. Then the teacher would come back the next week, and the book would go up in front of Neil, and he'd stare blankly at the page and pretend to read while he played the song, hoping he wouldn't be caught. The teacher told Neil's mom that he knew that Neil wasn't reading, that Neil thought he was fooling him, but he wasn't. Neil's mom said, just listen to him play, let him be. So he continued to learn more and more, developed a repertoire, created his own arrangements of songs, it was only in his 30s that he learned to read music and returned to more formal studies and began teaching traditional reading-based lessons. So when he got this call, he thought about his own use of patterns and shapes, and he figured he'd try that with Wade, that Wade would feel the shapes in his hands. It seemed worth a try. And it turned out that Wade did great. Neil figured that without sight, Wade was compensating with his other senses, his hearing, his sense of touch. But after a few months of Wade learning a bunch of songs, he talked with Wade's dad and found out that they were not only happy with Wade's progress, but that he'd started to teach his four-year-old sister how to play these songs, and she was blind too. So Neil wondered, what would happen if he tried to teach more kids like this? Maybe it could be a sort of musical preschool, something they could do before learning real music. But when he tried this, he consistently saw better results with these kids after a few months than what more advanced students were achieving after a year or more of traditional lessons. So then he thought maybe it's just him. It's this quirky thing that maybe only he could do as a teacher. So he kept experimenting with other teachers, with students of different ages, with different musical styles, contemporary, blues, jazz, classical. Each step of the way, students would consistently get these fantastic results. 
Practice was suddenly no longer a fight. Parents were having to fight to get their kids away from the piano. And this playing-based approach was working with students of all ages and with anyone who wanted to learn how to teach it. From there, Neil continued to develop the approach into the fully structured curriculum we now have. Now we're going to share a video with you that's going to give you some other perspectives on Simply Music. I took traditional piano lessons when I was younger, uh, junior high through early high school. And I took them for about five years. And I learned how to read music, but my playing was very limited because when I got to a certain point of learning music, I kind of broke down and, and it was difficult for me. And so I hit a wall and I didn't go beyond that wall. When I had lessons, I hated it because it wasn't, we were playing Mary Had a Little Lamb and Little Brown Jug and songs that used to drive my mother crazy while I was practicing. So she didn't want to hear me practice. In the traditional piano lessons that I took as a child, the, just the whole traditional method was much more regimented, um, so formalized that it, it seemed I was learning a foreign language, which I always, you know, piano lessons are a foreign language but it was much more difficult and less natural and less fun. To see my kids in, in 13 months go from literally barely being able to hit the keys to being able to play full-on classical music is pretty incredible. It's been, it's been really um, wonderful as a parent. I play blues, accompaniments, Beatles songs play classical music, play just pop music, just anything you can really think of. is so natural. It teaches the, the children to play piano so naturally. And it just, it just happens. She's playing. When she has free time, she plays. Um, she plays beautifully. She plays music that I love. Um, so I, my house is full of classical music. I love it. He has a, a larger repertoire of music at six years old now. He's been taking for a year than I did in my traditional method when I took for three years, which is just amazing to me. With Simply Music, I have about seven pieces that I know by memory, and I'm really thrilled about that. If you're alone and maybe a little bit lonely, you don't feel like sitting in front of the TV, you can go over to the piano and play some songs and it's a great feeling. The other day I was getting on the elevator in my building and this couple came out of the apartment and they said, are you the lady that plays the piano? I said, yes. She said, it sounds so good. Oh, it made me feel great the whole rest of the day. <laughs> I'm eight years old and I can play 21 songs and I just think it's really fun and I think it's just a great thing to do. It's a thrill for me to see how happy she is and how, how enthusiastic she is and happy with her accomplishments and how fast they come. It's built up her confidence. Simply Music has given her an opportunity to be confident about her ability. Firstly, Simply Music is a music education institution and uh, primarily we develop music education programs. And we have two types of programs, programs for students who want to learn how to play music and also programs for teachers who want to learn how to teach music. Our programs are a breakthrough. Now I know you know, it's a word that gets used a lot, 
Uh, you know, it's very difficult to turn on the radio or the TV these days without hearing the word breakthrough being used everywhere. But I mean something very specific when I use the word breakthrough. You know, for me, uh, this is not an improvement on traditional methods. It's not better than traditional methods. This is a program that produces results that are a, a geometric leap beyond what has ever been considered possible in music education. The songs are just are awesome. They're just fun to play. Your friends come over and you just say, I know that song and I'll play it for you. They go, geez, how do you know that? That is awesome. How long have you been taking lessons? About two months. Whoa, that is incredible. After the first, uh, I'd say less than a month, I was so proud of what he had accomplished and I was just, it was far beyond my expectations. I have just been so amazed. Simply Music has made it possible for Jeff to know almost 30 songs in less than seven months. And when I tell people that, they really don't believe it. Every time I hear him play, I just, um, I'm so proud of him. It's simple. It's just simple. Simply Music. When somebody comes in to me as, as a teacher, I say, well, we're going to learn a bunch of songs now. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> songs, that's what I want to do. I want to learn how to play. I think what's really powerful about it is that we give people an immediate access to self-expression. Here's what I love about Simply Music. I love being able to teach people how to play instantly, having people walk away from their first lesson playing a song two hands together, having people in just a handful of months have 10, 15, 20 songs, seeing people just smile when they come to lessons watching the kids just walk in and give me a hug because they're so happy to be there, watching them walk away with a smile on their face. Simply Music, you reach playing immediately. I've just never seen these kind of results anywhere before. Um, I've never had students love it so much. And um, I've had adult beginners who have been moved to tears in their first few lessons because they're so excited by what they're learning so quickly. I've had other adults say that they've had to set an alarm clock or a timer on the top of the piano to remind themselves to stop playing and go and do something else. Um, I've had parents say that with traditional lessons they had to virtually force the kids to practice and with Simply Music they're having to virtually drag the kids away from the piano. And I love that. One of the things that's tremendously important in the learning process, you know, in being a Simply Music student, is the, the experience of learning the experience of oneself going through the process. It's, it's an easy experience. People don't find that they struggle with this method. It's not arduous, it's not uh, intense. There's a very natural feeling to learning with this program. So when students start, we're able to really draw on existing physical skills, existing oral skills, existing visual skills, the existing natural sense of musicality that everybody has. And this is a program that really has a way of drawing on that and translating it into a repertoire immediately from the day that they start. And so, you know, what it lends itself to is an experience of accomplishment, victory. I feel good about myself. One time my friend came over and I go, hey, you like blues? He goes, yeah, he didn't know I played the piano. He thought I was going to play some like, twinkle, twinkle, little star thing, but I started playing some nice, real get going blues song, you really like it. Over three or four weeks, I was playing, uh, you know, four or five tunes. <laughs> 14 songs <laughs> in 12 weeks, that's pretty good. I've learned 36 songs. Every week I learn another song. The house is filled with music now and it just is a wonderful thing. And I didn't think it was going to be as simple as it really is. From the very minute you sit down at the piano, you are playing the piano, and it's fun from the very beginning. If you drive a car, how many places did you go today? How many last month? How many over the course of the whole last year? You're not using a street map. It's like the car invisibly gets there. You can be talking, listening to the radio, and you still get there to hundreds or even thousands of different places. Why? Because the brain is a pattern-seeking device. We lay our instructions out on the road, turn left at the house with the boat, or go past the pink house and turn right, and so on. 
It's the same with this program. We show you how to lay your instructions out on the instrument. Now what we've shown you here is just a tiny snapshot of a comprehensive, fully structured curriculum that starts by building a repertoire of 30 to 50 songs in your first year, which are relatively advanced, mature sounding, sophisticated pieces of music, including variations and arrangements, as well as accompaniment and improvisation and composition. This program taps into the skills you use on a daily basis. The second year, we begin to weave in the reading process, and the way we teach you to read is profoundly different from traditional approaches, and your reading skills quickly catch up with your performance skills. With that as the foundation, we teach you more advanced accompaniment, and we give you a vast repertoire of classical, blues, jazz, arrangements, and accompaniments. Then, with a really strong foundation in reading, we work on even more advanced jazz, reading, accompaniments, composition, and improvisation. This is a fully expanded curriculum, and there are four goals with this program. Goal number one is that you experience playing as a natural self-expression. That two is that you develop an ability to play a huge repertoire. Three, that you can self-generate, meaning that you can progress on your own. For example, you can find a piece of music that you really want to play and be able to figure it out even without your teacher's help and memorize it just like the rest of your repertoire. And four, that you have a highly self-affirming experience. You get to feel great about yourself because it's victory after victory after victory. To get you ready to learn your first piece in the next lesson, we'd like to give you some basic information about the piano that will help you prepare. If you've had previous experience, this will probably be familiar to you. If you're brand new to the piano, let's get started. Now, of course, it's ideal if you practice everything we teach you on a piano or a keyboard. But if you're going through this program just to check out the method before you decide to get an instrument, you'll be able to use what we call the practice pad to learn everything right along with us. We'll talk more about the practice pad in the next lesson, but in the meantime, follow the instructions in your student home materials so you can make your own practice pad and use it beginning right now as we cover these piano basics. First, let's talk about fingers. In piano, Every finger has a number. Hold up your hands with me. The thumb is finger number one, so wiggle your thumbs and say one. The pointers are finger number two. The middle fingers are finger number three. The ring fingers are finger number four. And the pinkies are finger number five. Next, we mentioned that the keys are named after letters of the alphabet. Well, there's only one particular note we need to be able to find right now. It's middle C. You can see that the black keys appear in groups of two and groups of three. If you find the group of two black keys closest to the middle of the keyboard, then you can look at the white note just to their left over here. We've marked this black key with some white tape just for demonstration purposes to make the middle area of the keyboard easy to find here in the video. Now we'll end up needing some other C's as well, and you can find them next to any of the group of two black keys. So go ahead and find different C's on your keyboard. And make sure you know which one is middle C. Finally, I want to show you how to make what we call a chord. This is when we play more than one note at the same time. Let's start with our right hand thumb, finger number one, on middle C. And let's lay down the rest of the fingers so we've got all five fingers on five white notes in a row. To make this particular type of chord we need, you're going to want to hold down finger one, and finger three, and finger five. So it's every other finger. This may feel a bit strange at first, but you'll definitely get comfortable with it over time. Something that could make it feel a little easier to do is start with just your outside fingers, the thumb and the pinky, fingers one and five. Those are pretty easy to play together at the same time, and once they're down, you can then add finger three. The goal is to be able to strike all three notes at once. 
And this is something you can try with any white notes across the whole keyboard. The last thing I want to address is how you sit at the piano. This isn't just to be picky. It'll actually help you be as comfortable as possible while you're playing so that you can play as easily as possible. It's very important that you sit at a neutral position. What that means is sit squarely on your bench, around the middle of the bench, or even a bit behind the middle. Keep good posture with your back straight but not rigid. Then extend your arms straight out as fists so that you can reach the part of the instrument right behind the keys. That's how you'll know that you're at the right distance from the instrument. Now place your fingers on the keys. Your elbows should fall naturally so they're just a bit in front of your body so that your upper arms aren't pointed quite straight down at the floor. Your wrists shouldn't be bent and everything from your knuckles to your elbows should be level with the keys and the floor. You're not at an angle where your hands are above the instrument or below. You may need to sit on something that brings you a little bit higher or lower on your bench or your seat if you're sitting too high or too low. Primarily, you want to feel comfortable and not have any stress on your arms, your wrists, or your hands. And something to consider, your fingers are relatively small and lack power. So think about using the power in your arms and even in your upper back to move those fingers. As we wrap up lesson number one, there's just one more thing we would like you to do or not do depending on who you are. For new students, it's a great idea to listen to the four songs you're going to learn. In your student home materials, you'll find audio tracks for the four songs you'll be learning in this program. This is the only part of your student home materials where it's okay to go ahead beyond what we actually teach you during lesson time. In fact, not only is it okay, we encourage it. Listen just for fun, without trying to learn anything. Even that kind of casual familiarity with how a song sounds can take care of maybe about a third of the work of learning a new piece. But if you already happen to play very well by ear, then we advise you to not listen ahead. Because then you'll be tempted to learn the songs without the methods learning strategies. And the point of a project is never just the project itself, but those strategies that will allow you to get to ever more advanced projects. Well, we've covered a lot of ground here in our very first lesson. Thanks for taking the time to learn a bit about Simply Music, where it came from, and some of the key ideas behind it. Get familiar with those piano basics and how to sit at the piano, and we'll see you in lesson number two, where you'll get to learn the first song of the four that you'll learn in this program. You'll find that you can apply a lot of those things that I didn't get to these, and I didn't get to those. It was halfway in between. And then we should have a little cartoon character that comes out and says, break the rules. Right? <laughs>